Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. I'm Caleb Nauer, and we're joined with Tassos Meat Sweat Salixiu. What's going on, man? Hey, Caleb. How are you? Good, good. So, I think we're getting to that age where it's like, hmm, is this meat sweats or is this a bigger problem I'm about to have here? Am I about to drop out or not? So, <laughs> yeah, I definitely can't eat like uh, I used to for sure. That's, you know, hands down, not possible anymore. <laughs> we still keep trying that, and that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, I haven't, I haven't yet switched like, the types of food that I eat. So I still eat the same types of food, you know, like the fattier steaks and, and what have you. I just don't eat as much of it as I used to. Cause it really, really starts to take its toll. <laughs> it really does. So a little food centric on the mind the last couple of weeks we've been missing. We've been really tied up with we had Titan Fest and then we had Thanksgiving holidays here. So very much a food centric uh, way of thinking lately, but we're shifting, we're pivoting, uh, into the rest of this here winter season and thought what we would do today is kind of give you guys some updates as to what we've been up to lately. Some of the things that are working on in the back end that's not super prevalent or you guys might not be seeing and just give you some updates and let you know how things are going. But before we launch into that, toss us if you will please give the good people their call to action. Yes, absolutely. Don't forget to like, listen, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube or anywhere you download your audio podcasts like Apple, Google, and Spotify. All right, all right. So uh, let's tell folks about Titan Fest. So that was a couple weeks ago. Uh, really went off well. I think it was a, a great event. Uh, it went off with as few hitches as you can imagine. So, you know, it was a little nerve wracking leading up to it, the scale of what we were doing and everything else, but I think it turned out really well. Yeah. Titan Fest was a really good time. We had, uh, more people attend this year, uh, than last year. We pretty much had kind of, let's say the core group from the original one, plus some additional wisps. We even had uh, a wisp uh, out of Canada join us this year. So that was pretty cool. Um, of course, the, the menu was fantastic. I'm wagooed out now, I think. So I probably <laughs> won't be eating any wagyu for well, at least a couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, a lot of good food, a lot of good talk. Um, really, you know, kind of getting everybody together to have this kind of social interaction and and really getting to know everybody for who they are and how they do things is is really important and it seems uh, really appreciated by by those you know by those who attend and you know we're basically growing this wisp family you know uh, a little bit more every year so i look forward to titan fest 2022 yeah, for sure. You know, the the camaraderie and getting to know people in a relaxed environment or like that, it, it goes really far. So, you know, a lot of times you see folks over and over again at these shows. We just saw a lot of them in Vegas, but, you know, everything's got that Vegas energy. There's so much going on with all the events and the sessions and the show floor. I mean, it's, it's exhausting, you know, as we all know. So this was a sort of much more lower key sort of thing. But we got to, to learn a lot about people's, their businesses, their their you know, personalities and spouses and stuff like that, which is good. Uh, guys talk a lot about partnerships. You know, we've kind of hit on that quite a bit, but uh, people getting to know people in your region, you know, maybe even their competitors, there's still a lot of ways where folks can work together on things. You know, they're, they're not the big bad. The, the neighbor down the road from you is not the big bad. The big bad is, you know, the Gooberman and all their help that they're putting in, <laughs> but your cable companies, your, your electric co-ops and stuff like that. So, as we've got to be more sort of um, creative as an industry, I guess would be a way to put it, and looking at tackling these, but also tackling these open opportunities. I think there's never been as many opportunities in our industry to grow your business as there are now. And, you know, it's hard to reinvent the wheel every time. So getting to know people, figuring out where you can work together or where you don't work together, you know, and stay away from things is super helpful and just leads to more of, you know, the the social aspect and the, the bonding aspect of what this is and what we're really trying to push. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's, it's great to see, uh, you know, these wisps from even from different States and different places get together and really try and help. I mean, there's, there's, there was talk about, you know, wisps from, you know, one state now going to travel to another state to show them how they do fiber, right? How they're putting in fiber and how they can grow their business and uh, really leverage the wins that everybody has, you know, because every area is obviously different as well. 
Um, it's really it's really useful to have people you can rely on and people you can depend on to help you. And uh, yeah, you know this this Wisp industry is really starting to come together uh, as a, a, a one. You know to you know fight the the greater good and and come and achieve you know the the ultimate goal of you know providing internet you know to everybody you know without you know the big boys being involved or trying to do as much as they can uh, without having them involved. So it's 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 good to see. I love it. It really is. You know, and that came through nowhere, you know, more than like the storm response stuff. We've talked about it. We talked about it with Spencer in the last podcast yep. uh, and then in general, but you know, we got some of the stories because a lot of those guys that were there have been through a bunch of storms lately. So hurricanes and stuff like that. And, you know, getting their real world experience as to what was needed, you know, fuel <laughs> seemed yeah. to be the main thing It's fuel, fuel and being able to move it. You know, you can have 5,000 gallons of fuel, but if you can't move it, you know, and that's where these partnerships and being friends with folks really comes into play you know you help some folks out down the road they'll help you out and it's super important yeah absolutely definitely so we got done with that left the beautiful middle of nowhere texas wherever we were uh <laughs> so apparently Casey's kingsland like, texas yeah kingsland texas they're like where is that and i'm like ah, kind of towards the middle i don't know it's a big place <laughs> but uh so we got back from that, rolled immediately into Thanksgiving. So I'm like, well, because I haven't had enough to eat lately. Mm, yeah. So <laughs> you guys have a, a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I got to give big props out to my wife, Tina. Man, I mean, she she did a lot. So I mean, we, we, we plowed through Titan Fest and three days of all this prepping and cooking and everything else, you know, to come home. And then, you know, my, my brother and his family flew in. Uh, for Thanksgiving week, right? So, so we only had about like a day and a half, two days of kind of like calm and rest, you know, before we had more family come in and a lot of more preparation and more eating to do and everything like that. So, yeah, we got through Thanksgiving. It was a blessing. Uh, you know, everybody was there. Uh, it was a good time, and uh, you know, now now we get to rest a little bit before Christmas and New Year's, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love this time of year, but towards the end, it's like, all right, let's kick into salad mode. Let's kick into not ha- let's not prep a seven course meal. Let's <laughs> let's just kind of dial it back a hair. Maybe call the old DoorDash and uh, get it done that way. So, yeah, we had a real quiet one here. It was it was needed, uh, but we're back to it. We're gonna run hard. Yeah, you know, this time of year, you know, a lot of folks sort of dial back. I always think it's a good time to get caught up on a lot of stuff so a lot of those sort of tedious projects that you need to focus on you, know, you kind of kick the can down the road a bit it's, it's that time for a lot of people i think and hunker down and be like all right new year's coming let's get everything cleaned up and ready to roll into it and um that's a lot of what we've been doing sort of behind the scenes you know there's a lot of stuff that goes on you know we're very much the the public face you know in a lot of different ways but there's so much that goes on in the background that folks don't see so we thought we'd kind of highlight some of those things that we've been hitting lately and bring them to the attention stuff that maybe you don't know or you don't know that's coming so um talk about maintenance and updating so we have gone through and updated a bunch of the documentation for the antenna so the dot ant files uh, for the new and updated models, we've published all those on the download sections for each individual product. Uh, the Google Network Planner, we've now brought that fully up to date, uh, which was a little bit bigger of a task than we remembered from the last time we did it. Yeah. Uh, but, oops, but no problem. So we've got those upgraded. So, you know, we're very much, like I said in the past, an educational company. We want to make sure people have all the info that out there that we can provide so that you guys can do your jobs. Definitely. Yeah. And now, especially <clears throat> with the addition of our CBRS antennas coming, it's even more important to make sure that we update uh, all that information uh, for a Google Network Planner and, and stuff like that. And, and going beyond that as well, even in our spec sheets, right? So we're making some additions there. We've been asked by many WISPs, you know, to uh, provide the EPA data, right? It's the effective projected area of our antennas because they're, you know, very kind of oddly shaped compared compared to your standard, you know, you know, the rectangular sectors or round dishes and stuff. Um, this type of information is needed uh, when you're going on, you know, certain towers, you, typically like your American towers where you're leasing tower space and stuff like that. You need engineered documents. You need to know what the, you know, exact wind load is of our antennas. So we finally went through and, you know, we did all the calculations. So that should be coming on our spec sheet soon, the EPA data. So we'll have the, the surface area and even like the drag coefficients and everything like that uh, for our antennas added into our spec sheets uh, pretty soon. <laughs> soon. I hate saying soon all the time. Soon. Yeah. So it's there. We like have the data. Soon. We just have to update it all. <laughs> Exactly. 
<laughs> so, but we're we're for real soon this time, not so. It it's looks it it's done. We're we're pretty much just reviewing everything. So, like I said, yeah, the towers, the your your bigger tower companies, your American towers, your uh, crowns and stuff. We see it a lot requested too um, for people that are calculating uh, ballast requirements on rooftop mounts, especially if you're near the coast. You know, yep. a lot of places don't care, but we're seeing more and more of those to make sure they've got the loading and safety requirements and stuff for those hurricane prone areas. So something you don't really see in a lot of our uh, competitors information, but again, you know, we want to provide all the information we can and that's a big part of it. Yeah. It's a big data set, a really big data set. And it took a lot of time. We thought it would be a lot quicker, but uh, <laughs> we, we, apparently we had to buy uh, more computers, <laughs> more computing power in order to really do it uh, and give you the most accurate data. So. Yeah, I was like, oh, how hard can this be? Can y'all just figure this out? Uh, yeah, we were wrong. So we had to remodel a bunch of stuff, compared it to the wind tunnel testing, which was super cool. Yeah. Um, and they matched up, so that's good. So we're, we're on the same page there. <laughs> yep, been verified. So we've got products. You know, we announced a number of products uh, at Wispapalooza. So we've got the Array, excuse me, the Array Sector 217. Uh, the three gig array sectors, the asymmetric uh, starter horn, the forty five degree, and then a couple of updated um, to the updated models for the current existing asymmetric horns and stuff. So the asymmetric horn models are starting to process for the channel now. You know, it takes a little bit with shipping and stuff. The forty five degree starter horn is coming soon, but again, actual soon, not us soon. So I think production's ready now. Whether or not you know it processes during a normal amount. Of time through shipping and everything else eh, we'll, we'll see that's that's sort of out of our hands at that point and kind of ties into this whole uh absolute mess that the global supply chain's in now yeah so i mean most of this stuff um <clears throat> it was pretty much slated to be ready before chinese new year which we know is coming right around the corner right so it looks like everything is still online if we get it shipped before then we should be we should be good and uh right where we projected for delivery of the product so it's looking good looking really good yeah we've had a lot of interest in the three gig array sectors for the cbrs folks uh doing what we can do with those so we've reached out uh, we've got a list that we're keeping up a whole separate campaign in our crm so if you've got interest in those specifically please reach out to us um because we'll be able to get samples and stuff here pretty soon it looks like so we want to go ahead and get that ball really rolling for 2022 Definitely, definitely. What about our link calculator? The updates to that? Yeah. So, you know, link calculator, uh, we love that thing. Again, we, <laughs> link calculator, use it. Use the calculator. <laughs> Please. Uh, so we're actually doing some really cool updates to that. Uh, one of the main requests that we've had people come, uh, main requests we've had from people, excuse me, is saying, hey, I want to save this data. Like it works really well, but there's no really way to save it. I mean, you can print out the PDF and stuff. Um, so one of the major things that we've added now is the ability to create and log into an account and be able to save that data. So you build out a tower set and your links and stuff like that. Now you can log in and play with that data again. In addition to that, we're also doing multi AP mapping. So we will yes. put up multiple access points, cover up a whole area. We're adding more gerbils to the background. So it runs and processes a lot faster, uh, which is based on feedback from some folks for sure. So, that's really exciting. And we're kind of tinkering with some other key, you know, some, some, some nice to haves and then looking, you know, from a generational perspective, what do we want to do? You know, phase two, phase three, as it goes on. So there's a lot of really cool stuff going on with the link calculator right now. And we're excited to see it. Yeah. And I think we're also going to have the import and export functionality, right. To uh, export to a KMZ file and stuff. So that way it could be used later or, or, or you know, could be looked at and, and put into your systems, uh, you know, from our system. So that's, that's going to be really cool. Yeah, exactly. And then we can, you know, being able to save and log in, we'll be able to see, Hey, what are your calcs? And you want to compare what you're calculating versus the real world. Like, well, you know, we'll be able to do that a lot easier, a lot quicker. I think because so many of these calls that we have when we're, when we're training and educating users is based, Hey, let's pull up the link calculator showing it. So, you know, we continue to promote that as a super helpful tool, one of the most helpful tools we have, and we're doing our best to make it even better. Yeah, it's it's been a long time coming too, right? So, I mean, obviously, you know, the 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 amount of use that our link calculator 
uh, has been getting is, is growing and growing. And obviously, you know, the need to plot multiple antennas is, is, is an absolute nowadays uh, with the density of antennas that people are putting up. So, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to see uh, it start. So uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly when it's going to be ready, but it's definitely uh, in process and it's, it's happening. So that would be really cool to see that. Yeah, that may be more of a RF element soon <laughs> timeline, right? So. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, the development time for stuff like that uh, obviously takes a lot of time, right? So, and it's it's kind of new for us as well. You know, typically these kind of calculators and planners is something you see the radio manufacturers, uh, you know, supply. Right? It's you know, it's not very common, or it's not really common at all. I haven't seen any other antenna manufacturer out there really have a calculator that's uh, as in depth uh, as as our calculator, right? So it's kind of a, a first for the antenna industry for sure. Yeah, ex exactly. So if you guys are, or you're looking for any changes or updates or you're like, Hey, I'd really like to see this here. I think this would be really important. Now's the time to let us know. So, you know, we've got a lot of feedback already that we're implementing in here, but Hey, if you've got some ideas, definitely reach out to us, let us know, and we will see if we can get it done. Absolutely. Oh, uh, let's see. What else is exciting? Oh, Canada. So, Ooh. oh, Canada. Ooh. Oh, oh Canada. Ooh, Canada. What's this all about? <laughs> what's somebody t so, poor Adam, who came down uh, for Titan Fest, super solid guy. But awesome. I think he was he was fully prepared for the, the Canadian ribbing that he kind of got. He was dishing it right back, too. So, yeah, he's really cool. Grassroots internet, right? Yeah. 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 I think so. Uh, if we botch that, sorry about that, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I learned a lot, you know, about how they do things up there. They're primarily a fiber outfit, but they're again, you know, getting into the WISP world to to serve areas that they can't do with fiber now, or you know, which is taking a while. Which is a story we hear all the time. But you know, it's the same thing, but different challenges. Their IC and everything's different. But a big part of what we're wanting to do in 2022 is further expand our reach in the Canada. You know, we've been there for a while. We've been servicing products through. Uh, ISP Supplies Canada, uh, MBSI Wave, TDL, uh, you know, and they've been great partners for us. And I think as we go to further expand our reach in to do that and get more stock in there, we have just now added Double Radius as a distributor for Canada. So they've been a great partner for us in the States, you know, been working with them for years, but they are making a... Uh, you know, distribution change with an outfit they've got set up in Toronto. And what it really means is in the end, you know, we've got a lot more product that will be in Canada and flattening out the supply chain and making product available so that you guys can get what you need, deploy in a time effective manner and take off with it. So yeah, they're, uh, they're supplying a lot of the resellers, um, that are already up there. And it's just, again, more product, more availability. We'll have them in our stock locator and stuff here soon. And then that way you can find stuff again, talk to your resellers. If you're already you know, looking for product, you're already buying their, you know, conversations with the others. So just letting you guys know that there's a lot of product heading that way. Awesome. So that's mainly it for the, the sort of big updates in the background now. And I guess, you know, again, it's a time of reflection. We're like, okay, let's finish up this year. What are we really looking forward to next year? And, you know, just thinking off the top of my head, the CBRS stuff is really exciting. Uh, just giving people options there that they haven't had before. The big push into Canada, really exciting for us. Um, you know, what are their, excuse me, the, uh, the push, the 4,000, the 6,000 or whatever they're calling it for Cambium. Uh, Cambium. Yep. Yeah. That's a big product. You know, we're, we're, we're tied in deeply with that. So we're really excited to see that and other sort of radio generation stuff that have been talked about for a while, but are starting to launch. Like it's going to be a really interesting year for the entire industry next year. Yeah. So we're going to see a, a lot of really cool stuff coming out. Yeah, and, I mean, and a lot of it really depends on the kind of chip shortage, right, and supply chain yeah. kind of stuff. So there's a, a lot of a, a lot of unknowns uh, for new hardware that's out or coming out on whether or not they'll be able to sustain uh, delivering that uh, that product to the industry, right? So so we'll have to see. Like I said, 2022 is definitely going to be an, a very very interesting year for for everybody for sure. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully six gig. If the FCC will finally get their act together with six gig, figure out what the final solutions and rules and stuff are. You know, there's a lot of people prepping for it. We are too, 
But, yep. you know, a lot of it's like, well, we, you know, it's hard to commit until there's a final rule set. I mean, they could, they could kick this can down the road for several years. Same as CBRS. You know, the CBRS stuff was, was a thing for a really long time before they actually got that going. So, you know, I don't think this process for the SEC is going to be nearly as onerous, but there are some requirements with their, not really SAS system, but whatever they're calling it, I forget off the top of my head. Uh, but, you know, they've got to determine that and give a final ruling on max ERP and all that other stuff. So, yeah, and it'd be helpful. Yeah. So, do know we are fully aware and excited because I think that is going to be the next really big push because it's all basically clean spectrum at that point. So, it's going to let's get, keep it that way. Let's, let's keep, keep it that, it that way. way by using no high omnis. quality antennas. No omnis. Yeah, no omnis. No omnis. No omnis. No omnis. <laughs> 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 no omnis, no sloppy sectors. You want to use, um, I don't know, we'll say horn antennas yeah, that work exactly. really good. No side lobes, no back lobes. And because the last thing we want to do is pollute a clean spectrum. It's, I think it's the biggest the biggest tool that the unlicensed WISP is going to have in the States for you know a while. So between that, this next gen stuff, the AX stuff coming from Mosa, the AX stuff coming from Cambium, you know, we've got the potential to really build big networks and compete with the big boys and get things done. So be good stewards. Who knows what comes from Ubiquity too, right? We haven't heard from them in a long, long time, right? So I'm sure they must have something brewing, you know? So. Yeah, see. there's rumblings and rumors, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. So, you know, they're definitely not sleeping over there. So that's, no. you know, there's a lot of really cool, exciting stuff coming down the road. So if we can make any of it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anything, anyways, that's really about it. Just wanted to, to get everyone up to date, let y'all know that we did miss a couple of weeks, but we're back full steam and ready to rock. So toss us, you have anything that you want to add or? wrap up with no not at all not at all other than you know the the standard stuff but we definitely want to hear from you uh so please give us your feedback uh, if you want to join the show please let us know as well um speaking of kind of you know being away obviously with the new year coming here we'll probably uh you know uh have another podcast or two before the end of the year and then probably start this right back up after the new year so um that's pretty much it well, like I said, reach out to us. You know where to find us. We are at rfelements.com. You can reach us, toss us at rfelements.com, Caleb at rfelements.com. We've got our Facebook pages, the RFE groups, uh, our YouTube page. You know, we're there. So please reach out. Let us know about any of these things. Again, link calculator questions or any sort of updates and stuff you're looking for there. Definitely reach out to us soon as we start running it. And that'd be great. Awesome. Catch you guys next time. All right, see you guys. Be good.